the hallelujah we do say greetings to you all that have joined us for this kids day amats the scripture truth revealed in its most simplest of dynamics and we do pray that the riches of yours Torah, the light of revelation and that is the fullness of the truth of Yahshua HaMashiach that will cause upon him the face of Yah to shine upon a nation of people his ma'or the rejoicing of our bosom that we delight greatly and then our countenance speaks of the Rafa, the healing the nurturing of Torah that it supplies all the essence and the riches of life to make us strong and to abound and to succeed and to be successful in the ways of Torah. Now this is a generation that has not known Almighty God. It is one whose minds are scattered brains, if I must use that expression. They are patak, open-minded and silly and simpletons with no gravity of understanding about anything. But of course they know everything. They have the resolution to everything. There is nothing more despicable than an ignorant man or woman that doesn't realize that he or she is ignorant. Nothing more despising in the face of Yah. So he caused the light of his Torah to shine upon his nation, his people. And when the light, the awe of Yah shines, when the beauty of Torah is revealed, it begins to restore and to bring the fullness of our Rafa, our health. It is amazing that there are those that are natural, that they look healthy and refresh and clean. And yet the nation of Yah, we look dismal and unfit for the, roy for the royal gathering uh, of the elect of Almighty Yah. He has elected us to a great wedding. And whether you're the bride or the bridegroom, we certainly are the bride. And so it's one thing that the bride does, she get herself at the epic of beauty. Sure she does. But don't sit here like hypocrites on me. You know she does. She prepares herself for that one occasion. She prepares herself. And even the man as well. He makes sure that he has the physical attraction. In everything it is in proper alliance and everything is order. And that's what the Torah of Yah does is order our steps aright. And something is wrong with us as a nation of people when we are supposed to exude and exemplify the most beautiful countenance of any nation. I'm going to teach. In my elocution, my lecture, my speech, whatever superlative you want to apply to it, it is appropriate. But I will certainly make known what Torah says. Show us what has impedes us. Sometimes we don't realize how filthy and wicked we are. We can always see someone else's filth. It is just a reflection of you. You're in worse condition than that. And so as a nation of people, I want, to, I want you to give me your undivided attention and to be attentive. I'm not going to tell you where I'm reading from. Because our minds tend to wander. And everyone that sits here in their expertise and their knowledge of Torah... They only find time to scrutinize Torah in the midst of the teaching. And so I want you to listen. 
I will be the motivational speaker. When the motivational speaker speaks, no one is reading. When the lecture, his elocution, his speech, everyone pays attention. And so if you think it's a life what I teach, then disregard it. Everything that I will teach is from Torah. One of the most destructive natures of a people that we are Israel, it is one thing that we don't know. We're talking about his Rafa, his health, and the healthiness of a nation. I want to show you why we're not healthy, and why we don't look healthy, and why we do not present this aura of health and beauty. It's in the book. And then on the next time I teach, I will show us how to get there. But I want to read from the Nobi that spoke so profoundly unto Ephraim, the nation that we are, who we are. Yah says how he had loved his nation and he called them out of Misraim. And the only thing they could remember were the flesh pots and the garlic. And not the mighty miracles that his hand delivered them. The greatness of his yachts. Yokshua has delivered us. Hallelujah. Now he brought them out of the midst of great calamity and death. And death besieged upon them. And they were not overtaken by death. And so the Nobi speaks to the prophet. He says even as the words of Yah. He says that his people are whom he has called out of Misraim, he talks about how they offer the gifts unto Balaam, Balak, unto Baal, to their lords and their gods and their Jesus Christ, this damnable lie. It's a lie. There's only one name given unto man whereby he must be Yosha. And he speaks with precise execution of his words so Yah says I have taught Ephraim Israel my nation also to go and I've taught them how to bear the arms of Sadiq he said this but they knew not that I was the one that healed them Rafa as he sins Forth the discipline of Torah, he sent forth his dabarim, his dabar, the word of promise, unto Abraham. And he healed his nation of people. He healed them for the purpose that when the heathens, the goyim, the nations of the earth would see them and say, what a spectacular people, what a marvelous looking people. The beauty of their daughters, hell, they don't see that. They don't see that among the nation of his people. Now let's get real and let Torah speak to us. There's nothing that punctuates or identify a nation with their beauty as the daughters of their people. That's a fact. That's a fact. Nothing more beautiful than the daughter of the people of any nation. It is right. They don't even know they've forgotten that I'm the one that Rafa that restored them. They caused gladness to overflow in their bosom. Held every kind of demonic unclean spirit. Pour out of the minds of his nation than any other people. Because we don't recognize the wickedness that we walk in. He said, I, they don't even know I heal them. And yet they will return back to Misraim. We want to go back to the way of Egypt. Into the laurels uh, and, the, and what we perceive as the great adventurous things uh, in Egypt. Well, if it was so adventurous, why are the people of Misraim suffering? Why are they? And the miseries are great. We have forgotten the one that heals us. How? It's only one way. 
He sends the light and the beauty of Torah. He calls men to execute the dynamics of Torah that is revealed unto the simplest of minds. That they may hold fast Yah's integrity. Hell, we don't have a damn bit of integrity. This is the only integrity we have this book. This is the only thing that would heal us. It will make us healthy and look healthy. And the world will ask the question. They don't ask that of us. Hell, because we look miserable. And that's what we look like as a people. You know, there are men that are old men and they look beautiful. The countenance, Yah says by the mouth of Moshe, unto Aharon, he says, and Yah bara, he calls the fashion, he makes his face, his ponim to shine. The awe of light to shine upon you. And not only that, but he will give him favor. And he gives us favor. The reason we don't understand because we don't know him. And that's a fact. We know him in our own self-grandizing, putrefied ways. Uh, to literally think that we have something. We're full of lies and deception. And murdering. He sends his word to heal us. Can I begin there's one verse that I'm particularly fond of. And I'll, I'm always searching to understand the depths and the dynamics. You will know where it's at when I read it. I want us to understand what is the cause of the deficiency in the nephesh. Not some damn soul. We're not some dead mass, and that's what the word soli sola, from its etymology that we, it has gravitated to us that we say soul. It is the nephesh, it is the living substance of the character of Yah in man. And that's why we look dead and twice dead because of our own filthiness of our sin. Now what are the impediments that cause us not to be enriched? To look lively and to have the liveliness of expectation from Torah. And then our nephesh, our being, the substance of who we are. That we are not successful, our hands, not the lies that T.D. Jakes calls successful. Yeah. Not the lies that Biddy Hinn calls successful, but there is something greater than all of that, Yisrael. It's the nurturing of your mind, the nurturing of your babies, and the nurturings of your daughters and your sons. That they grow in the stature of beauty. Yerusha had all those sons, but there was only one that was beautiful. He was ruddy. That's the one that shall start and sit in the seat of Shaul. It's almost like a mother having a favorite one. What wickedness. I hated that as a child. I watched the partialness of my mother with that one that she considered most. It's a depraved, damn wicked. I don't give a damn if you don't like me. As a depravity, you don't even know love. Love has no respect. It is love. It's the same. I hated that about her actions. And of course, I was ignorant of the sense it. There is one that rode unto the bay of the house, the elect of Yisraeli scattered abroad. He addresses them with, with the ruach of Hasid, of great love kindness. He calls them beloved, beloved of Yah. He said, beloved, my compassion, my desire, above all things of Yah's creation. He uses the word all. In essence, call the fullness, the whole of everything. I would have above all things. My passion, my desire, above everything that I know of you. Uh, he says, uh, 
I want that you would solach. I want you to prosper. I want you to prosper. I want you to have the conscience of Hamashiach. I want you to make progression and progress in every aspect of your life daily. Something is wrong if we can't measure the progression or the process of our performance that we can see results. When Ahmad visits the doctor, what is the first thing he asks? How are you doing? Are you doing better? The hypocrisy of our mind. He said, I want you above all things. He said, I want you to prosper. And I want you to be in Rafa. I want you to be healthy in mind. A healthy mind, the old proverb is a healthy body. And I want you to be in Rafa, the health of Yah, the restoration, the restoring. He says, even as your nefesh, even as the living being of the essence of your emotions, your intelligence, the mass of what you are above all things, even as your nefesh, as it prosper. Now what? Are the impediments that impedes us from prospering. That we do not grow and mature. Something is sick in our minds. If we are still caught up in the smallish of those things that never cause us to prosper and to grow. Such juvenile activities. There is no one's fault that I don't prosper. It's mine. We are such damn hypocrites. We want to blame everyone. But I want to show you it's you. I want to show you it's you. Not my brother nor my sister. But it's me. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you, you are the one. Hallelujah. Because this is the great refreshing and the enlightenment. And the growth progressively. That we are sustained, our lives are sustained with vigor and energy because David, in all of his great battles and struggles, he says, Barak, blessed is the man who walked not in the Musa, the counsel of the wicked, criminal minded. You know, it's the criminal mind where the mind speaks against everything that is of Yah. When one is so damn wicked. I was thinking the other day. I said, yeah. And there are times I just cry. I said, these are not even mothers today and fathers. They will sell their babies for a rock of their ass to dance and to rap. And I say, they sell their babies for nothing. They turn their daughters into two dollar whores overnight. It is the truth. You don't walk in the counsel of a wicked man. I remember as a young man when y'all began to deal with me, my mother, her words, uh, you're young. He expects you to do things. And it costs my life to go down uh, into the spirals of hell. When a man doesn't stand in the counsel of the wicked, nor in the way of sinner men, uh, but he uh, neither does he sit in the seat of those that mock Yah and scorn Yah? Did a great the name of Yah. I said to my Raphael the other day, I said, people will debate the name Jesus with Yoshua. Yoshua said, you shall be hated of all men for my name's sake. I said, if the name of Jesus was so right, then why in the hell do the Catholics love it? And Farrakhan and all these lawyers, the Baptists and the Methodists, and all of them love it. The drunkard, the KKK, everybody loves the name of Jesus. You mention the name of Yoshua, yeah, and see how they respond. So you know something is wrong. You know something is wrong. There's only one name. The wicked of wicked love Christmas. And they celebrate Jesus' birthday. Move in. He says, but his delight, his hafiz, 
would generate this euphoric of great excitement. And we get excited about the dollar store. But his delight is in the Torah, the counsel, the wisdom, the Torah of Yah. And in the Torah of Yah, he, he meditates, he utters it. Men don't speak Torah. They speak words that are not even relevant to Torah. So when they talk, they're not talking about the beauty of Torah. But he meditates Chaga in the Torah day and night. When a man meditates in that, you will see the beauty of his face. Yah calls his face to shine upon that man. When you look at that man's poem, it's a beautiful poem. I look at men sometimes, the, the stroll of their face, same thing with women. Eh? You can see the filth of, that's in their ruach. But he caused his face to shine upon that man. When he haga, meditate with great essence, with great energy, he utters the word of God. He speaks the word of God to his mind. We want to speak it to someone else to show them what we know. What a man knows, it will reflect uh, in his demeanor, his character, and the beauty of his, uh, his, 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 his substance of what he is. You can talk it all day long, as the old proverbs, talking loud and saying nothing in the days. Hallelujah. Okay, you know that one too, mama, huh? He said, and that one shall be like a tree planted by the rivers. They are not just a river, that's plural. The living truth, the rivers of water that bring forth his fruits, the sweetness, the beauty of the pere of Torah. He brings forth his fruit in season and his leaves shall not wither. They never fall off. That's something there. Zocade expressed us how the pine needles, how the new buds cause the pines, the evergreens to to. to Shake off the dry, dead ones, but these leaves never wither. The countenance of that man's face never withers. Back in the days when I would go to the doctor, the first thing they looked at your eyes and your tongue, and they could tell a lot. So if they had the ability to discern that, you tell me I can't look at a man and discern what's in the man or a woman. Look at the filthiness of our eyes. And whatsoever he does shall uh, prosper. If he eats much, if he eats little, he prospers in the ways of Yah. Yah my beloved nation, my compassion above all things that you may prosper and be in excellent health even as your nefesh. As your emotions grow, as your own self personal identity in your Shua, as you develop the passion for Torah, we don't even have passion. Here we got passion for the dollar mart, no passion for Torah. That's what the nefesh is, it, it has this great passion. We don't think words are very powerful. We're foolish. That's why the elderly men and women, they should understand they, they're older than some of us. Even their wisdom of experience in life speaks with great volume. There's nothing like an old fool. Nothing. There's nothing like an old fool. Young fool, he has time to grow, but an old fool, there's nothing like him. He stinks. Why are we not progressing and prospering and having the health of Torah revive us? We have no strength of our own. It is the Torah that revives us. We have no way to conquer, to overcome the obstacles. Yet because we have Chaga meditated, consumed, we utter the Torah in our minds, we speak it to ourselves. It brings the fullness of health because uh, Yah sends the power of that truth uh, to heal us. You cannot be a warrior without health. 
You cannot fight an excellent battle, battle for as in us. I want to speak from the wisdom of men and to rob the wise men. And I want to begin upon this premise here. As the wisdom of Shalom speaks, he says, This which has impeded or slowed the progress of your nephesh from prospering, he speaks with great utter utterance of wisdom. He says, For into a malicious, a heart that is shaft, empty, and deceitful, and wicked. Don't worry, we're going to touch every ground here tonight. I've got 45 minutes. I'll get it all. Into a malicious left. How can you be malicious to one or speak ill against one that's kind to you? Into a malicious heart. A nephesh. That's what it says. It says soul in the writings of the book. Into a malicious, into a shav, nefesh. He says, Hukma, wisdom, shall not enter into that kind of heart. Into that nefesh, you that are malice and empty of nothing, uh, you that speak utterance of lies and deception, you're full of lies. The wisdom of Yahweh will never enter into that nefesh. That's why we don't prosper. We don't see the vileness of our nature and the stench of our ways. Into that there's nothing more damnable than a malicious spirit. Into a malicious nefesh. The wisdom of Yah shall not enter. Nor dwell, nor will it live. In a nephesh, a body that loves sin, that is enslaved to sin. You love sin, you're not going to prosper. You lies. You, it's amazing that I think that uh, you're sinning. I shall, my friend, get into a nephesh whereby it is enslaved, it loves sin, it loves lies and corruption, it utter lies. Uh, there's not even a snowball chance in hell. Your nephesh is going to prosper. This is your impediment. This is what impedes me from looking healthy and acting healthy and walking in the delight of Torah. Because we are malicious. We love sin. That's what we love. What is the resolve? How did I get to that point? I will show you here in the wisdom of a wise man. He talks about shohat, corruption. Isn't it amazing everyone is corrupt but me? He's talking about corruption, one that deals corruptly, that don't deal with integrity and honesty. Deal with dishonesty, honesty. There's one thing I've never liked, a liar. I've always said, yeah, I don't want to be a liar and false. I've never been a false hypocrite. No, I've never been that way. Even in the world, I wasn't that way. You're my man, you're my man. That's the way I've always been. There's nothing like corruption for corruption when one's mind is perverted. I'm talking about spiritually and morally. Well, I, 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 won't, I, I don't do that, but I know I need to. You are a cheap piece of trash. But what have you done all your days that have caused you to prosper? You're filthy. You don't have a damn thing. You don't even have a, a, a decent piece of bread to eat. And there are folks that live like that all day long. It hasn't prospered them one bit. Your sense is toward the hill, and you are a pig. That's the way we are. There's nothing more full of corruption than pigs. We carry every kind of unclean thing there is. So continue to eat your fat back in your pork chop. It says, for a corruptible body, 
He's talking about the nefesh. The essence of a man. He said when a body is corrupt, it weighs down the nefesh. For more experience for you that are ignorant like I am, it weighs down the soul. It weighs down the emotions. It weighs down the heart. When you're corrupt, that's why we're not prospering. It weighs it down. We don't examine ourselves for corruption. We don't purge ourselves uh, of our wickedness. Cleanse yourself from all filthiness. There's nothing that weighs down the body like a, your, your, your nephew is like a corrupt body. And this earthly tabernacle weighs down the mind that muse upon many things. When the mind is weighed down, it's almost like you're getting on the telephone and talking all damn day. Talking about nothing. See, that's what a corrupt body does. That's where he put the word muse in there. Muse. They love to talk. Talk, talk, talk. Talk, talk, talk. I must be striking a nerve right here. I'm glad. I don't fear any man when it comes to this. No woman. You can't do nothing for me to make me fear you in that regard. You don't give me a damn thing. I love to see beautiful women and clean. Preach like this to keep these young boys and young daughters keep themselves unspotted from the world. No delight in the world. Don't go the way of the world and act like them. Your mothers should teach them that and show them in your beauty. Don't go the way of the world. Because once the world have you, you're nothing but a rotten whore. Uh, watching my natural mother make my natural sister out of a dog. She's miserable now. I feel sorry for the woman. She didn't teach her a damn thing. I don't care if you don't love me. That's why my heart is always open to the little one. I don't want them to suffer the way I suffer. I don't want to go through what I had to. No one. I want to preach my mind. It says that this earthly tabernacle is so weighed down, it doesn't mind anything but this moose. It just talks. It's always into everything but what is righteous. And it talks upon not a few things, but upon many things. They know everything. You find old silly women, old silly men, they know everything. They know everything in the book. I, you know, it's one thing about me. I, I like to listen to men. I really do, but I like to talk. When I talk, I take over because I know what I'm talking about. Most men don't. They don't know what they're talking about. I said to Oxymion the other day, I said, these men once said, prove it, prove it, prove it. His name is not sure. I said, people are so simple. They, they want to be wise and they want to show the excellence of the knowledge. I said, I would have turned right to where Yeshua raised Nazareth from the dead. I said, prove it. Coward, prove that. Well, what? No, 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 you prove it. You tell me you're going to prove it by the multiples of books? I proved the Torah of Yah by the wisdom of the book. I don't need no external proof. And see, people don't want, they don't think that's simple. I will take the book and show them how ignorant they are. I say, prove that. Prove it. No, 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 prove it. Prove it, he did that. He raised them from the dead. He did. I don't need no other external material to show me that. I believe it. Moving on, mama. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Why are we being so destroyed of our health and our minds? If this is not right, nothing is going to be right. The wisdom of one that speaks your rock, he says this. He says, an evil, a ra, an evil nefesh, one that is marred and corrupt and stinks, an evil nefesh will maha, will destroy, it will blot out, it will obliterate, it will exterminate, it will uh, destroy him who has it. You got an evil nefesh. Your life is centered around evil things and thoughts. Uh, and you move about wicked things. It's going to destroy you. You will never have light. You'll look dirty. 
You are not lively. It will destroy him that has it. And it will make him a laughing stock. Of those that he thinks or she thinks that loves them. That's in the book. How do you know that? Because uh, I'll stay up late at night and search the book when my body tells me, Whoa, you're tired. Because I want you to feed from the same table I feed from. I don't eat steak here and not. Make sure you have steak. We make sure that everyone eats steak. I like steak too. And cheesecake as well. Baked salmon, fried salmon, and fried fish. How about that? When one has an evil nefesh, it destroys us. That's why Yakahan said, beloved above all things, I want you to prosper. So when you go to the doctor, he asks you, what's wrong, doesn't he? She says, what's wrong? Where are you hurting? Where? And through the analogy and the analytical ability of the body's uh, physicality, uh, they can tell you, okay, this, this is the pancreas that's acting out. They know. It doesn't take a rocket science to understand that. It's just uh, deliberate liber deliberation continuously in the same processes over and over and over and over again that you understand. If they do that, why don't we do that from this book? Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It will destroy one and you become a laughing stock. You become someone that looks silly. and Even your enemies say, he is silly. Can I give us an example of one of the greatest things that we could amass in our lives to cause our nephews to begin on the road of prospering? The messenger speaks here. With all your nephews, your substance, your passion, your life, your love, your emotion, your intelligence. He tells us to yare, to fear, to honor, to reverence. O Maria. Is that? Is that of great clarity there? Yeah. With all of our nephews, all of our being, we should fear Yah. We taught on the seven Ruachim, or the seven spirits of Yah, did we not? He says, with, we should yare, Yah. He says, and I show you something that is important and equal. He says, I want you to honor his queen, the messengers, and those that teach and inspire us and show us and guide us in Torah that take us to the grounds to nourish ourselves. I'm taking us to the pastures of Yah. I am taking us to the grounds of nourishment. That you can get all the essential of all of the trace elements that you need to make your mind healthy. And then when you make your mind healthy, your body gets healthy. And when your body gets healthy, uh, it is the culmination of those things as your ruach began to develop and become stronger. You become healthy, you're able to resist. If you can resist the devil... If we submit ourselves unto the Torah of Yah, he commands us to resist Hashatan and he shall flee. Now if we get to that state of conscience, uh, of the mind of Yahshua, we can resist anything uh, and it is cast out of our minds. You understand? We're not given over unto that urgency uh, of that great loss. We need true messenger. We need men that are strong. We need all men that have laid down their lives for you. And all women as well. This damn lust for generation doesn't give a damn. It is the truth, man. We don't have the chassid, the love, kindness of you. He uses the word steadfast love kindness. These damn false hypocrites say that. He uses the word steadfast. And when something is steadfast, it never changes. Never changes. You know, the children will ask me things, Papi, can I have that? I say, no. 
And then they will begin to say, please, Papi, please. I said, no. Papi, Papi, please, can I, can I just have it? I said, no, Papi, please. All right, just, just get a little bit of it, okay? That's how y'all does us. If we come humble with the contrite Ruach, we are some arrogant damn beasts. He said he's going to mix the spirit of man and beast among his people. We are some arrogant damn beasts. You don't have no love kindness. You that think you have it, you don't have it. Because if you got that, others will speak of your love kindness. Damn hypocrites we are. It's almost like when the doctors say, do this, this, and that. Well, well, you know, I had to do this. I just love my Cheetos at night. I shall. I just got to have my fat back greasy dippings. I did right until the other day, and I didn't mess up. I didn't mess up, doctor. And it's an old man that I met many years ago. Shimri, was, he was with me, Zakain. We went down here in the center of town. And the fellow said, man, you, you men are so big and so strong looking. That's what he said. And the old man, he told me his story about his cancer. I was talking to one after he died. He said this. He said, Dr. Williams said he never had a patient like that old man. He said if Dr. Williams had told him to get naked in center city and run, he would have done that. He obeyed every, every single drop and tittle that Dr. Williams commanded him. Oh, we are hypocrites. Well, the doctor said that. Well, hell, you don't do what the doctor said. You do it for a few days and you think you've done something nice. And you compliment yourself. That's how wicked we are. We we'll compliment ourselves thinking we have done something. You haven't done. That's a regiment. You understand what a regiment is? It is something that you continue. It is something that you get up in the morning, examine your poneme. You examine your face and see if it's right. You examine your heart. You try it. Don't worry about trying mind. And that light shall shine on you all day long because the face of Yah shall shine. I want, to, I want you, as the old folks say, get done with this. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We are such a lust for greedy damn people. For what? Just things that are not time for us. Shirak, don't touch me here. He talks about this pota, this game. For the flesh, our nephesh, our own greed. He says, a greedy, a greedy. He's talking about an unrighteous and violent attitude. We're violent toward Israel. We are murderous because we will hate one another for no reason. You will know you hate me because you will speak the vileness of evil against his people. I've watched them, those that have been here, we have helped, and they will still lie and speak evil. One wrote me, Mama, the other day, you can tell the person is miserable as hell. They want to challenge me. Well, I, I don't have time to challenge you. I got too much work to do. I got a hundred T-posts or better to drive in the morning. It's going to be cold. I got to drive them. I'll get it done, too. Because our health and our well-being is more important than one of my ailing little uh, setbacks. It is. We think we're the only one that ail. You know what else? We don't give a damn to someone else. Hell, we'll put more on this one, and you don't understand they're ailing. And if you did it together, then you both will not ail as much. That's how wicked we are. Can I read this? Ah, uh, I know. I can accept that from you. Oh, woman. Beautiful. It's beautiful to get old. A greedy, uncovetous man's eye is not satisfied with the portion. It's almost like one not satisfied with the riches of Yahweh what he grants unto them. If he grants you breath today, you ought to be satisfied. He calls you to wake in the morning. It's enough to call some or the light of great gladness to shine. 
He says this, what is our problem? He said, because of your iniquity, your ovon, your wicked, perverted ways, uh, and your injustice, you're not, you don't do justice. You do justice by this one and your own convoluted justice, uh, and you are justice with that one. This is what drives our nefesh. Uh. He says, our own iniquity, and our injustice uh, of the wicked dries up his nefesh. You have no life. I got the word, this is what nefesh means. Self, life, creature, person, appetite, mind, living being, desire, emotion, passion, the man himself, self, and personal individual. That's all right. I'm glad that I didn't have to define it. Yeah, I did. And he caused it to be written by many men. He moved upon them. You understand? That that's what Nefesh is. Quickly, can I read that again, my friend? He says, a greedy and covetous man's eyes is not satisfied with the portion. He said, because we're never satisfied. Were they satisfied when they came out of Mr. Raima? They began to muse and whisper. You don't whisper against the nation. You got something to whisper against when you come to that one. That's the decency of honesty. If I whisper against Yisra'ya, then I will do something and whisper against her. I will not have integrity with her. It's just the truth. All right, mama, you're older than me. You can tell me that. You want to be my mama. You got a daughter older than me. All right. How about that? You had a son too? That's right. He says, but iniquity, not someone else, but iniquity, injustice of the wicked dries up his nephesh. And just for the experience, I will use soul, although it is improper, it dries up your soul, your nephesh, your emotions, your life. You find one that has no emotions. Uh, I'm not talking about emotionalism. But when one doesn't exude this great euphoric uh, uh, of the living substance of Torah, that's wickedness in that man or woman. That's iniquity then. They look dry. There's no life. That's a wicked Jezebel. Uh, wicked old simple-minded boy of a man. Uh, he's not even a man. He's a boy. The wisdom of Shirak speaks profoundly. Dries up the nefesh of one. It's your own inequity. It's your own injustice. You do injustice with one another. It's wrong. We will never prosper. We will never be in the health of Yah. The old proverb, crabs always pulling one back into the battle. Well, crabs are just trying to get out. And so the crab will go with the other one. If you try to go with the other one, just pull one down. Well, don't pull nobody down with you. If you're down, don't try to pull nobody down. That's what wickedness does. Because you told, you're dealing with a dry day. David said, when a man doesn't delight in the counsel of the wicked, he shall be like one planted by the rivers of water. When one delights in iniquity, they're nefesh, then they're dried. In their own injustice, they're not justice. They don't do justice. We have to deal fairly and honest about every matter. Hallelujah. Can't be a damn hypocrite. That, no, no, that's right to do. You don't need nobody to tell you how to do that. You just do, do right. You know to do right, do it. If you don't do it, then it is sin. Hallelujah. Well, you didn't talk to me on that one. I got you right here. It talks about this kind of a mindset here. It talks about the one that's near gone. What is that, man? Well... That's the Hebraic expression. But in our English vernacular, I give you insight. It is a whisper. Whisper. Shh. They like to whisper. Don't let nobody know what we've done. We're going to whisper. And you're gone. One that loves to slander and backbite like a dog. Love to speak, I shall come on. Love to speak in their private secret little
conclaves. Yah covers us all. I'm so glad. He says a whisper. One that does that. Well, I don't do that. We don't. Yah says defiles his own nephew. Oh, we don't think that. That's why we take delight in doing it. That's why it doesn't trouble us when we do it. A whisper defiles his own being, his own joy, own delight, self. Individually, they will never prosper. They will never. I've seen the poorest of women and men even in their ignorance, began to walk according to the discipline of the Torah. And I've seen their lives revolutionized. Even if the woman walks right, the man doesn't has to walk right. You will see a total change. If she's right, can be a damn hypocrite woman. Can't be phony. Got to be real. Can't be a hypocrite, man. And I've watched the whole dynamics of situations change. <sighs> but a whisper. Anytime you find one whispering with you, they're going to whisper against you. A whisper. They will backbite. They will lie. They are slanders. Birds of the same feather flock together. A whisper defiles, mar, corrupt, pervert his own nephesh. And he is hated someday. He is hated wheresoever neighborhood he dwells. I don't care where they go, they're going to be hated. I don't care what neighborhood they enter into. I don't want to be around him. I'm just telling you, I don't, I don't like looking at that woman. Go ahead, get away from me. I don't like looking at her. I don't want to see him. I don't want to mess with him. I mean, folks, I don't, I don't want to talk to them. I love to see a beautiful woman. I'm not talking about the one that thinks that she is sensual and sexy. Hey, you put on some clothes and wash your dirty body. I'm talking to all women. I don't like women like that. I like beautiful women that their beauty, the aura, their beauty is accentuated by their character. And they are refined. I love that. It got this great regard for me. And I will not even want to, I don't want to say nothing, even look at that one, because her beauty is beautiful. Nothing like that. Same thing with a man. Woman sees a man, she thinks, oh, he is so fine, baby. Mm, 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 mm. No, I don't see fineness in a woman like that. There's a young daughter, she writes me every now and then. I've talked about her. She lives in Denver, she's 18. She's going to college and she'll write me, Ray, uh, what do you think about this dream I had? I will say, little girl, it's of no importance, your dream. She will say to me, Ray, I can tell she'll write me once every three months or so. But just when she, I've made mention of that before. I say, you make sure your mom and dad know you're writing me. I know how this damnable thing they call internet is. You tell your daddy. Oh, they know, Rhea. She wrote me back. Oh, they know us. All right. And she will say to me, sometimes it's so difficult. There's such difficulties. It's hard at times. And I will say to her all the time, keep yourself young, daughter. Don't let this world rape your mind. She's in one of those whole houses. She asks, but Rhea, but the name you're sure, is it, does it, 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 do we have to use it? And I say, keep yourself pure and unspotted from the world. I would tell her that. And that's how I respond with her. Her father called one Shabbat evening and put her on. Because of the way she was dressed. And I rebuked up and down. If you recall her, and she's written me ever since then. She didn't hate me. But one that's a damn whisper and a liar. They're hated wherever they go. They're going to start something. And they will cause their own nephesh because they hate their own nephesh. They defile their mind. 
and they talk ignorantly. There's nothing more vile than an ignorant man or woman. When they're stupid. Oh, I'm not going to stop talking like this. You don't even send enough offerings to stop me from talking like this. Some woman wrote me today about, well, Ray, I found a lot of truth there, but you're wrong when it comes to Christmas. I say, damn Christmas. Damn your Jesus. It's a damn lie. Damn it all. Damn your stupid Chris Christmas. And she's going to try to correct me. Jesse Bell. Hallelujah. This is one of the process, processes of what will enable you and benefit you. When the hukmah of the wisdom of Yah enter into your life, when wisdom, when the, when the hukmah of Yah enters in, when it bowls, when it proceeds, come forth. And when da'at, when knowledge, when you're able to discern, when you have understanding, when you have wisdom, that's what knowledge is. You can discern what is of Yah. You all can discern what I'm preaching or teaching from the book. Uh, these are wise words tonight. He said, it is pleasant to your nefesh. It makes you delight. It makes you fat. Can I ask you a question? Do you like to delight in a nice big, I, I like thick steaks. Yes, I do. I like a big potato. I don't want no small one. So to use the parallel of the natural, when the Torah of Yah, when the wisdom of this Torah is revealed, it calls you to have your nefesh, your being, to rejoice, to be glad. And it tells us this too. And this is the word mizimach, when distression, be distreet. It says when, hallelujah, it says, uh, listen now, it says distression, it said distression now, distression, distression shall preserve you and understanding shall keep you. Hear this, Yisrael. This is what shall keep us the distraction. When wisdom enters into our heart, it is pleasant to our nefesh. The understanding of Torah. It causes a very pleasant thing to fill our heart. It's pleasant to our nefesh. It causes our nefesh to delight with great delight. That's why we need wisdom. All the women you should teach wisdom, the young ones. You should not teach them your evil ways. Yeah. Mothers should teach daughters. What daughters? All daughters. This matters. Taught us who is our mother, our brother, our sister. Yeah. Those that hear and do the will of Yah. You don't teach them folly. Yeah. You teach them the wisdom and the beauty of daughters and sons. I want everything that I do to teach the young men. I want to teach them how to be a man. And how to be a husband one day. I want to see them react. You know, this morning, uh, Sipur and Sipi were at my home, and so uh, uh, they said to me, give me a hug, Papi, give me a hug. They said, no, get, give Nani one first. Yeah, give Nani her hug. And so I do it in a way that they understand the beauty of that. And when I did it, they just looked like, oh, Papi. Sarah would say, that is so sweet. That's how she told me. Oh, Papa, that is just so beautiful. That is so sweet. I want to teach them the strength of a man and the beauty of a man. You understand? I love my babies, but I don't, I don't like them in the house with just me. It's all right with my man. I don't want my tough to be evil spoken of. That's so sweet, Papi. That's how they talk. Oh, that's so beautiful. What's the problem? The wisdom of Shalomo says, My son, let not wisdom depart from your eyes. Keep sound with wisdom and discretion. Mishpat, sound judgment. Judge yourself with the same integrity. You have no integrity. That's why you don't judge yourself. Mishpat, that you understand the justice of Yah's ordinance. Keep this. He said that we keep this, that we keep those things, wisdom, wisdom and discretion or judgment. Look what he says, and I'm going to begin a teaching on judgment. It's going to ravel us. He says, so shall there they be. This is what 
calls us to be healthy. So shall there be life to your nephesh. This will make you, make you strong and, and look beautiful. You don't need to put no damn powders and makeup on your face. I don't need to put nothing on. I put on the Sadiq, the righteous garments of Yah. That's all I put on. And I stand like a strong man, not like a boy. That's right, old woman. If we put this on, this is what gives us life. We put on the spirit of whispering and lying and iniquity and of all and, evil and all of those things. There's nothing more wicked than a whisperer. Okay, just whisper. You'll find out. I watch folks, they're whispering about someone else. The same when they whisper about that one is whispering about them. Don't come to me against any ach or chokhi because we're going to get them and see if there's any validity to your statement. If people always want to witness this against someone and they don't have excellent witnesses. They're not even excellent in their witness. They lie, they cheat, they steal, they're corrupt. Don't try to witness against someone with your wicked ways. I'm going to close in a moment. Hallelujah. Here's the word that, uh, let me read this quickly. It says this, the man, the ish, the strong man. The man of steadfast love kindness. We're talking about hasid. A kindness that is uh, faithful. A kindness that is never broached. Someone says something and that's that kindness is broached. Damn hypocrites. We wonder why we're not prospering. Talking about those that are tough. It says, the man of steadfast love kindness does well to his own nephesh. This is what makes you healthy people. You get your mind healthy, you will get healthy. You get this Torah, this word, and you when you resist the devil, you can resist hell, every kind of being, power, and everything. You can resist it. There's no reason. He says this, though. He says, but he that is kasha, that is cruel, trouble his own flesh, your own nephew. When you find a cruel man, there's nothing more venerable than a cruel woman. There's nothing more stinking. No, daughters, he made you to be a help me to be beautiful. There's nothing more stinking than a cruel woman. There's nothing more vile than a cruel woman. But a cruel woman, one that is cruel, troubles their own nerves. When you're cruel, that's why. When you find people that are cruel and mean, they're always troubled about everything. Your mother, I know it's right, man. You will always find them. Everything, everything's troubled them. Everything. They always got something to say. That's not for anything. Because they're cruel. They're cruel. She knows I won't hide one thing. They're cruel. Because they're so cruel, they're cruel to them. They don't love them. Live above all, above all things, I would say that would prosper and be in excellent. Even as your mind, your body, your life, as the light of my or the light of Torah shine from you. Hallelujah. I am unique. He calls us a sogula. A people like no other people. And I want to wear that badge. No, I'm not like you. I am of the birth, the inheritance rights, and the melchuts, the kingdom of Yah. And I'm a warrior. I'm a warrior. But I'm going to act like one. How do you do this, lady? That's well. Listen to this. We as a nation, everything has to do with our, what we call, eating. Achal. Achal. Before we consume, digest. 
But listen to what Torah says. It says, a man shall eat, a woman shall eat of, by the fruit of his mouth. If there's something vile in you, it's going to flow from your gut that way. So you eat of fruit from the fruit of your mouth, but the nefesh, okay, for your understanding, the soul, the nefesh of the transgressor, those that defy Torah. Well, I, I can't do it. Well, those are the transgressors. They shall eat violence. Hamas. And even their speech is one of violence. The man is violent against his wife. The wife violent against her husband. Daddy violent against his children. Mama violent against her children. Hamas. They're violent. And they're vicious. Mom, I remember when I, when I left my mother's house, right, I don't know if I had turned, yes, yeah, 17. It's a woman trying to beat me, and she couldn't even, I, I didn't fight my mother. I didn't talk to her like my brothers, my sister. I didn't talk to her that way. I didn't talk smart mouth to her. I didn't. And she appreciated that. And this old woman trying to beat me. Here I am a boy playing basketball. There was no sport I couldn't play. You, you name it, I did it. I didn't turn back and say, oh, woman. You know what I did? I just started, well, I, here I'm 17 years old, woman. You're still whipping me? She wasn't even whipping my young brother. But she was whipping me. Oh, you silly people, don't get all. I'm glad she did it. She whipped me unjustly and unrighteously and wickedly. But that's all right. I don't take that back. So this old woman beat me. She's trying to beat me here. I'm hard. And we had been out playing ball, my friend. And so she got on me. I'm going to whip the. You should be whipping that boy. What about her? Our age are around the same. And I just start jogging up the steps. I just. I ran the steps. When I got to the stop, she said she couldn't come up to the top of the steps. She couldn't. She said, well, I guess I'm going to have to stop beating you. You don't got too big. Now, Mama, you should have spent stop whipping me. I'm a man. You shouldn't whip me. The, the nephesh of the slugger desires and have nothing. But the nephesh of one that is diligent, the one that is harutz. You got to be harutz. You got to say, I'm going to do this. You got to, ha you, you got to have a will. A pleasure in doing what is best. And it's going to be healthy. But we're sluggers. We say, well, oh, I, I mess up the day. You're going to mess up day after tomorrow. But you must be diligent. The word harut, you have to have, you have to be sharp. You have to pinpoint everything. It has to be with strictness of decision. It says, but the nephesh of the diligent shall be made, I like this, shall be made fat. I want to be fat, my face to glisten with the oil of the beauty of Yeshua, Hamashiach. Hallelujah. I want to close with this I want us to avoid. It's from Shirach, the wise counselor of the university there in Yerushalayim. He talks to us as sons because the man is the head. He said, my son... We must test Sarah. We must test and prove our nephesh while we live. We must prove what we are. We must prove our sincerity. While you live, see what is evil and bad for it. You know it's wrong, it is bad for it. Don't do it. You know damn well that bowl of ice cream and cheesecake and 10 8 p.m. is not the best for you. You know that bowl of french fries and that hamburger, cheeseburger, and that slice, three slices of pizza, and you reroute back and get another one, you know it's not best for you. Just might as well get real. Huh? He says, when you find out not what's best for you, don't give yourself to that. You know what's not best for you. Don't give yourself to that. that. Don't give yourself to that. For not everything is profitable. Not everything is Ya'al. You don't profit from everything. Not everything is 
profitable for everyone. And not every person enjoys everything. Well, I enjoy me a big, thick steak. You may not enjoy that. You'd rather have some collard greens, some turnip greens. And I was going to say that, thank you, ma'am. And a piece of cornbread, not cornbread. No one cornbread. No such thing as cornbread. It's corn, cornbread. You want cornbread? You go. And you don't need a fork with that. Let's do it proper. Fingers and all. All right. I like that one. He says, "Do not have an insatiable attitude. I mean, appetite about nothing. Don't. I got to have this. Don't have an appetite that cannot be satisfied." for anything, nor greedy to give yourself up to food, for any kind of food. We think that because we congregate in our whispering corners that we're getting spiritual food, but we're not. Don't give yourself up for any kind of food. I gotta have me some potato chips and I don't give a damn if they're organic, they're still bad for you. It's all right every now and then, I mean every now and then. I love me some ginger ale, but I, I don't like that Store-bought stuff. I like the Jamaican kind. Oh, again, yeah, I, like. I like to have me one every now and then. I used to be able to get one every now and then, but I can't get that now. I used to, but I can't get it now. I don't want that. Don't bring me that, mama. I like the Jamaican kind. Got a little tinge of hotness there. That other kind? It's cheap. Don't give me that. It says this, listen to this, when we overeat, it brings sickness. I don't care our folly, our sinful ways, our whispering, we get sick. What do you mean? Yeah. We don't want to praise Yah, we don't want to love Yah, we, want, we don't want to rejoice in the top of Yah. Yeah. Any kind of overeating you get, it brings sickness. Yeah. And it tells us that gluttony, when you just eat on that all the time, it brings this nausea. You become nausea by excessiveness. By excessiveness, by excessiveness, more and can't have enough. Many have perished. Mavith, they died immaturely or prematurely, and we're killing ourselves spiritually and naturally. We're killing ourselves. And many have, many, not rap, rap. Exceeding numerically, many have died, have perished. But he who is careful, take heed. And he prolongs his nephesh, his life. When we take heed to Yah, we prolong our lives. And that's what we must do, take heed to this word. That's why I didn't tell you why it read from. If it's a lie, you will know it's a lie. This was the truth that was taught tonight. That was line upon line, line and precept. Precept here a little and there a little. I just have to refine things because I have too many scripture. And I like to explain things. That's how you prolong life that way. Beloved, I would above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in tough health, even as your nephesh. These are not things that stimulate growth, only the wisdom, the knowledge. The da'at of Yah will stimulate growth in one's being. Anything else is going to bring life, death. One of the scripture I'm, going to, I'm not going to read, but it's a profound teaching. I'll teach the next time on that. May the riches of Yah rest upon you all. You that have joined us, we do greet you all in Yahshua's name. Do send a gift to help your tithes, your offering. Send them here. There will be a great blessing of this labor of love here. And it would enrich others. May I enrich you all. The brach you all in Yeshua's name. May His great Sahava shine upon you all, and may He strengthen your bosom in Yeshua's mighty name. I don't care if you are not blessed with this tonight. I am, and this house shall be healed. May He strengthen us in this walk in Yeshua's name. Let us stand to our feet and turn toward Yerushalayim. In all things we do brach you our above for your great strength, your great nourishment tonight. Bless your people, guide them, 
Ndega Zakhin, Jimri, and those with him down the highway safely, and Hod Blantz and Hod Jennifer and her family. Yeah, you know all things. You're able. You're the one that made all things, and you made us. Yeah. We put it all in your hand, as the old Kerushim would yeah. say. Bless this house and your people, cause this truth to cause the heart of many to be stirred. In your sure's name, hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah.